and welcome to Tea and New Book Tuesday, which is inexplicably on Wednesday. I'm Lisa, and I'll be your librarian today. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Sorry, I just want to confirm one more time that I am in fact live. Yes! Yeah, there I am. It's working. I'm live. Technology is doing what it's supposed to do. Okay. The story of yesterday. <laughs> And why I ended up doing to you a new book Tuesday on a Wednesday. I got really good sleep Monday night going into Tuesday. And I was psyched. I was like, I am going to have the most awesome, energetic, productive day. I'm going to get so much done. I'm going to be like model librarian to the other librarians. I am going to be model citizen to our patrons. I am going to be my best possible self but my best possible self is also a little greedy and really in love with tea because you know those things are true with my least po my least best possible self I decided to make myself two cups of tea which I do sometimes I'll make one in the mug for while I'm like doing my emails and getting ready and doing notes and things and then I'll do one in a thermal cup so that when it's time to go live, I have another cup of tea. Because by then, the mug is gone. I uh, then took it out of the locked reference office, which is where I make my tea, into my little closet here that I, I live stream from. And I got super lazy at the door and was like, why don't I just tuck the thermal cup one under my arm? And then I'll still have a hand... I can unlock the door and come through the door in. And no sooner had I put it there than it all splashed and recently boiled water went all over my hands. I'm fine. I've been to quick care. All the wounds were superficial. It's totally fine. But it kind of burned my hands. So I had to go home. <laughs> I had to go to quick care and then I had to go home and sit with an ice pack on my hand because my right hand was the most affected um, for the rest of the day. So I lost an entire day to a very silly mistake. But I really wanted to do today's episode because we only have so many Tuesdays in February. And I don't want to squish. There's just so much being published right now, you guys. You have no idea. The list is so long and I have to cut so much out of it as it is. That if I have to combine romance, historical, science fiction, fantasy, and horror again, it would just be a monster it would be a 45 minute hour long stream. And those take just, no, just, let's just not. <laughs> so I just finagled everything I could and was like, I'll do it Wednesday morning and hopefully somebody will watch. <laughs> so if you're here and you're watching, thank you. Thank you so much. We are going to do as always the favorite part, the giveaway. Giveaway is a little more secret because as it is every time it's secret. Uh, one of the books we're going to talk about this week that we are buying, I also have a copy of to give away. So when we get to that book, we'll go over the giveaway. But we're also going to talk about romance and historical fiction. So I don't think I have any more news other than I think I've kind of petered out on Mansfield Park. I just, I can't, there's a way it's written that bothers me too, because Fanny isn't involved in half of what's happening. Like, Edmund is dealing with the Crawfords, and then he comes back and tells her about it, and asks her what she thinks about it. And that's, it's just not very interesting narratively. I see why this is one of Jane Austen's weaker books. If you want a really quick Austen read that is one of her lesser known books, Lady Susan is relatively fun. It's better if you watch the film Love and Friendship because they've laid it out a little better. Um, neither are at the level of Emma or Pride and Prejudice. But if you're just desperate for some genuine Austin, it is, it is her. It is fully her voice and her humor. And Lady Susan is almost like an anti-hero, which for Regency era Britain, with a female main character, that is... A revolution that just never happened. So, um, because she's very manipulative, very kind of conniving. <clears throat> I'm going camping this weekend and I may finally break out either Pride and Prejudice or Emma so I can sort of 
sit in a field somewhere and read Jane Austen. It, it feels very appropriate. With my cat. I'm planning on taking my cat. <laughs> so I may get no reading done as I just try to keep her from uh, destroying herself. Or running away. Or all of the other things that cats do. We'll see. It may be madness. <laughs> it will probably be madness. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into our books. Because that's how we get to the giveaway. We start with books. And then we do the giveaway. All right. Starting with a romance. By Any Other Name by Lauren Kate. What she doesn't know about love could fill a book. With a successful career as a romance editor and an engagement to a man who checks off all 99 of her boxes of her carefully curated list, Lainey's more than good. She's killing it. Then she's given the opportunity of a lifetime to work with world-renowned author and her biggest inspiration in love and life, the Noah Calloway. All Lainey has to do is cure Noah's writer's block and she'll get the promotion she's always dreamed of. Simple, right? But there's a reason no one has ever seen or spoken to the mysterious Noah Calloway. And that reason will rock Lainey's world. It will call into question everything she thought she knew. When she finally tosses her 99 expectations to the wind, Lainey may just discover that love by any other name can still be as sweet. This got a starred review from Publishers Weekly. Most of the books today have some starred reviews because, again, there's so much stuff coming out. I had to narrow it down by critical acclaim. If you're interested in By Any Other Name, it comes out March 1st. I forgot to mention that my um, my tea today is a LaCroix. <laughs> For obvious reasons, I wasn't feeling like boiling water again. I will probably be off tea until this weekend because I do really want like, you know, cup by the fire with, you know, the whole thing. And it's supposed to be cold this weekend. It should make camping even more interesting. All right. The Unsinkable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith. Greta James's meteoric rise to indie stardom was hard won. Before she graced magazine covers and sold out venues, she spent her girlhood strumming her guitar in the family garage. Her first fan was her mother, Helen, whose face shone bright in the dusty downtown bars where she got her start. But not everyone encouraged Greta to follow her dreams. While many daydream about a crowd chanting their name, her father, Conrad, sees only a precarious life ahead for his daughter. Greta has spent her life trying to prove him wrong. But three months after Helen's sudden death, and weeks before the launch of her high-stakes sophomore album, Greta has an onstage meltdown that goes viral. Attempting to outrun the humiliation and heartbreak, she reluctantly agrees to accompany her father, on a week-long Alaskan cruise, the very one that her parents had booked to celebrate their 40th anniversary. This could be the James family's last chance to heal old wounds, and will provide to be a voyage of discovery for them, as well as for Ben Wilder, a historian who's struggling with a major upheaval in his life. Ben is on board to lecture about Jack London's The Call of the Wild, the adventure story Greta's mother adored, and he captures Greta's attention after her streak of dating hangers-on. As Greta works to build up her confidence and heal, and Ben confronts his uncertain future, they must rely on one another to make sense of life's difficult choices. In the end, Greta must make the most challenging decision of all, to listen to the song within her, or make peace with those who love her. This has uh, got a starred review from Kirkus Magazine, so if you're interested in the unsinkable Greta James, it comes out March 1st. All right. In a New York Minute by Kate Spencer, which is, you'd think, I had planned this better, one of our giveaways today. I can't even tell if I've got it on screen. It also doesn't matter because the cover's right there. All right. So this doesn't come out for, I think, three weeks. But you could win it by going to the link in the description of this video and filling out the Google form there so you can give me contact information and pick out which book you would like to win, to enter, to win. I also only have one leftover that you can ask if you'd like. Uh, it usually goes to someone who didn't win a book. Uh, unless only one person wants it, and then they automatically get it. So anyway, In a New York Minute by Kate Spencer. Fanny Doyle is having the worst day. She's been laid off from her admittedly mediocre job, 
The subway doors ripped her favorite silk dress to ruins, and now she flashed her unmentionables to half of Lower Manhattan. On the plus side, a dashing stranger came to her rescue with his Gucci suit jacket. On the not-so-plus side, he can't get away from her fast enough. Worse yet, someone posted their entirely not meet cute online. Suddenly, Fanny and her knight in couture, Hayes Montgomery III, are the newest social media sensation. And all of New York is shipping. Hashtag Subway QTs. Only Fanny and Hayes couldn't be a more disastrous match. She's fanciful, talkative, and creative. He's serious, shy, and all about the numbers. Luckily, in a city of 8 million people, they never have to meet again. Yet somehow, Hayes and Fanny keep running into each other. A lot. But when Fanny's whole world is turned upside down, again, can she find the courage to trust in herself and finally have the life and love she's always wanted? This got a starred review from Kirkus. Uh, it comes out March 15th, but you could have it in your hands as early as tomorrow if you enter the giveaway. We have another pre-publication book that I'm giving away. This one is Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Fu. It is 1938 in China, and Meilin, a young wife, has a bright future. But when the Japanese army approaches, Meilin and her four-year-old son, Renshu, are forced to flee their home, relying on little but their wits and a beautifully illustrated hand scroll filled with ancient fabrics that offer solace and wisdom, they must travel through a ravaged country seeking refuge. Years later, Ren Su has settled in America as Henry Dow. Though his daughter is desperate to understand her heritage, he refuses to talk about his childhood. How can he keep his family safe in this new land when the weight of the past threatens to drag them down? Yet how can Lily learn who she is if she can never know her family story. Spanning continents and generations, Peach Blossom Spring is a bold and moving look at the history of modern China, told through the journey of one family. It's about the power of our past, the hope for a better future, and this haunting question, what would it mean to finally be home? So that's Peach Blossom Spring. That one comes out March 15th, but again, you could win it, have it in your hand as early as tomorrow. Next up, I have The Daughter's Tale, by Armando Lucas Correria. Okay. That's a letter from the author on the back. That is not a description of Dubuque. Um, it is a novel. It's based on the true story of the Nazi massacre of a French village in 1944. So that's what that's about. And we have the return of one. We got another copy of Nobody's Magic by Destiny Birdsong. So this is a glittering triple rich no novel, meaning a novel with three main characters. They are Suzette, Maple, and Angus, three black women with albinism. Uh, they're from Shreveport, Louisiana, and it's about their lives as they become adults. They were friends when they were kids and then as they become adults they grow apart and then back together so that's nobody's magic if you want any of these four books you're going to need to fill out the google form in the link you have 24 hours before i make it uh before i ta stop taking responses and i will contact you sometime tomorrow afternoon to let you know if you to let you know only if you won if you don't hear from me you did not win okay moving on to another book that's coming out, Sadie on a Plate by Amanda Elliott. Sadie is a rising star in the trendy Seattle restaurant scene. Her dream is to create unique, modern, and mouth-warming takes on traditional Jewish recipes. But after a public breakup with her boss, a famous chef, she is sure her career is over until she lands a coveted spot on the next season of her favorite TV show, Chef Supreme. On the plane to New York, Sadie has sizzling chemistry with her seatmate Luke, but tells him that she won't be able to contact him for the next six weeks. They prolong their night with a spontaneous magical dinner before parting ways, or so she thinks. When she turns up to set the next day, she makes a shocking discovery about who Luke is. If Sadie wants to save her career by winning Chef Supreme, she's going to have to ignore the simmering heat between her and Luke. But how long can she do that before the pot boils over? 
This is a first novel. It's a debut novel, but it's already gotten starred reviews from both Library Journal and Kirkus. If you're interested in Sadie on a Plate, it comes out March 15th. All right, moving on to our historical fiction. We're going to start with Chorus by Rebecca Kaufman. I try to move away so you don't have to hear me like slurp and swallow. Not sure I'm successful, but you know, that's the plan. The seven Shaw siblings have long been haunted by two events. Told in a back and forth narrative from the early 20th century through the 1950s, each sibling relays their own version of the memories that surrounded both their mother's mysterious death and the circumstances leading up to and beyond one sister's scandalous teenage pregnancy. As they move into adulthood, the siblings assume various new roles, caretaker to their aging father, addict, enabler, academic, decorated veteran, widows, and mothers and fathers to the next generation. Entangled in a family knot, each sibling encounters divorce, drama, and death, while haunted by a mother who was never truly there. Through this lens, they all seek not only to understand how her death shaped their family, but also to illuminate the insoluble nature of the many familial experiences we all encounter. The concept of home, the tenacity that is a family's love, and the unexpected ways through which healing can occur. Chorus is a hopeful story of family, of loss and recovery, of complicated relationship forged between brothers and sisters as they move through life together, and of the unlikely forces that first drive them away and then ultimately back home. This got a starred review from Publishers Weekly, and it comes out, if you're interested in Chorus, it comes out March 1st. Okay. Next up we have Woman on Fire by Lisa Barr. Thingy. There we go. All right. After taking her after talking her way into a job with Dan Mansfield, the leading investigative reporter in Chicago, rising young journalist Jules Roth is given an unusual and very secret assignment. Dan needs her to locate a painting stolen by the Nazis more than 75 years earlier. Legendary expressionist artist Ernst Engels' most famous work, Woman on Fire. World-renowned shoe designer Ellis Baum wants this portrait of a beautiful, mysterious woman for deeply personal reasons, and has enlisted Dan's help to find it. But Jules doesn't have much time. The famous designer is dying. Meanwhile in Europe, provocative and powerful Margot de Laurent also searches for the painting. Heir to her art collector family's millions, Margot is a cunning gallerist who gets everything she wants. The only thing standing in her way is Jules. Yet the passionate and determined Jules has unexpected resources of her own, including Adam Baum, Ellis's grandson. A recovering addict and a brilliant artist in his own right, Adam was once in Margot's clutches. He knows how ruthless she is and ha he'll do anything to help Jules locate the painting before Margot gets to it first. A thrilling tale of secrets, love, and sacrifice that illuminates the destructive cruelty of war and greed and the triumphant power of beauty and love, Woman on Fire tells the story of a remarkable woman and an exquisite work of art that burns bright, moving through hands, hearts, and history. This got a star review from Publishers Weekly. If you're interested in Woman on Fire, it comes out March 1st. All right. This one I did not realize what it was about until I had ar I was already rehearsing the description and I was like oh this this could be interesting they all look interesting I'm not saying they don't I'm just a little surprised by what this is about okay in 1822 a secret family moves into a secret cabin some 30 miles northeast of Baltimore to farm to hide and to bear 10 children over the course of the next 16 years Junius Booth, breadwinner, celebrated Shakespearean actor, and master of the house in more ways than one, is at once a mesmerizing talent and a man of terrifying instability. One by one the children arrive, as year by year the country draws frighteningly closer to the boiling point of secession and civil war. As the tenor of the world shifts, the Booths emerge from their hidden lives to cement their place as one of the country's leading theatrical families. But behind the curtains of the many stages they've graced, multiple scandals, family triumphs, and criminal disasters begin to take their toll, and the solemn siblings of John Wilkes Booth are left to reckon with the truth behind the destructively misleading prophecy. 
Booth is a startling portrait of a country in the throes of change and a vivid exploration of the ties that make and break a family. I was well into the second paragraph. Probably when they, they talk about them as a theatrical family and I was like, oh, this is a John Wilkes Booth origin story, which it is. So if you're interested in that, it got star reviews from Kirkus and Publishers Weekly and Booth comes out on March 8th. The Great Passion by James Runchy. All right. In 1727, Stefan Silberman is a... Oh, yeah. We've hit the last two. Is it the last two? I think so. And fair warning, both take place in Europe. This one takes place in um, wherever. Oh, Leipzig. And uh, the other one is in Russia. So the pronunciations are going to get less professional. <laughs> I mean, I try, people. I try. But I'm not from Leipzig. In 1727, Stefan Silberman, I think, is a grief-stricken 13-year-old struggling with the death of his mother and his removal to a school, a school in distant Leipzig. Despite his father's insistence that he may not that he try not to think about his mother too much, Stefan is haunted by her absence, and to make matters worse, he's bullied by his new classmates. But when the school's cantor, Johann Sebastian Bach, takes notice of his new pupil's beautiful singing voice and draws him from the choir to be a soloist, Stefan's life is permanently changed. Over the course of the next several months, and under Bach's careful tutelage, Stefan's musical skills progress and he is allowed to work as a copyist for Bach's many musical works. But mainly, drawn into Bach's family life, and away from the cruelty of the dorms and the lonely hours of his mourning, Stefan begins to feel at home. When another tragedy strikes, this time in the Bach family, Stefan bears witness to the depths of grief, the horrors of death, the solace of religion, and the beauty that can spring from even the most profound losses. Joyous, revelatory, and deeply moving, the Great Passion is an imaginative tour de force that tells the story of what it was like to sing, play, and hear box music for the very first time. This got a star review from Publishers Weekly. There's a fair amount of hype about this one coming into it. If you're interested in The Great Passion, it comes out March 15th. All right. Our final book of the day, Take Place in Russia. Lord help me with the names. The Tsarina's Daughter by Ellen Alpston. Olpston? It's only going to get worse. Okay. <laughs> Born into the house of Romanov, <laughs> that one I can pronounce, to the all-powerful Peter the Great and his wife Catherine, a former serf. Beautiful Zarevna Elizabeth is, her name is Elizabeth, thank God, is the envy of the Russian Empire. She is insulated by luxury and spoiled by her father, who dreams for her to marry King Louis XV of France and rule in Versailles. But when a wooded woodland creature gives her a Delphic prophecy, her life is turned upside down. Her volatile father suddenly dies, her only brother has been executed, and her mother takes the throne of Russia. As friends turn to foes in a dangerous atmosphere of the court, the princess must fear for her freedom and her life. Fate deals her blow after blow, and even loving, even loving her becomes a crime that warrants cruel torture and capital punishment. Elizabeth matures from suffering victim to strong and savvy survivor, but only her true love and their burning passion finally help her become who she is. When the imperial crown is left to the instant Zarvich, these names, Elizabeth finds herself in mortal danger and must confront a terrible dilemma. Seize the reins of power and harm an innocent child or find herself following in the footsteps of her murdered brother. Hidden behind a gorgeous, wildly decadent facade, the Russian imperial court is a viper's den of intrigue and ambition. Only a woman possessed of boundless courage and cunning can prove herself worthy to sit on the throne of Peter the Great. Ellen Alpston's stunning new novel, The Tsarina's Daughter, is the dramatic story of Elizabeth, daughter of C Catherine I and Peter the Great, who ruled Russia during an extraordinarily life marked by love, danger, passion, and scandal. It's got a star review from Booklist. If you are interested in the, sounds very dramatic and um, opulent probably, uh, The Tsarina's Daughter, it comes out March 15th. All right. That is our books for today, for this week. 
I will join you again next week on Tuesday, <laughs> not on Wednesday. And we will talk about science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Uh, enter the giveaway if you want to. Sign up for the newsletter if you want to. And join us on Goodreads if you want to. Until then, I will see you next Tuesday. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>